What's going on guys, Juice Messi here and welcome to a brand new video and welcome to your daily dose of transfer gossip. And today we've got a very special video because it's not a normal transfer update episode, we're covering every single summer transfer from the Premier League. So you're probably fully aware but yesterday at 5pm the transfer window closed for English sides. And like I said before, we're covering every single incoming transfer throughout the whole of the summer window, not just deadline day. So just before we get started, if you could do out good stuff by leaving a like rating, press the subscribe button if you're new, and press the bell notification next to it so you never miss an upload. And today's question of the day, what was the best transfer in the Premier League this window? And two more things I'm going to mention before the episode actually gets started. Uh, number one is that the transfers featuring, they're all up to date until about 9pm on Thursday night. And finally, I'm only covering the players that have come into clubs because if I talk about players leaving as well, the video will probably be like 30 minutes long. Right, so the first team is going to be Arsenal, and apparently at the start of the window, they had a £45 million transfer budget. They also cut off a Champions League football, but their business has been incredible. They broke their club record to bring in Nicola Pepe from Lille as a £72 million fee. William Saliba has cost them £27 million from Saint Etienne, but he's gone straight back out on loan to the French side for next season. They brought a young Brazilian called Martinelli, that's from Ituano, and he cost them just over £6 mil. Also got Danny Ceballos on loan from Real Madrid. Arsenal concluded their transfer business by making two signings. First up is long-term target Kieran Tierney. He signed from Celtic for £25 million, and the other player coming in was David Luiz. He joined from Chelsea for £8 million. One of the busiest sides, if not the busiest side from the window in the Prem, is going to be new boys Aston Villa. They gained promotion last season via the playoffs, and they spent a lot of money, and they'll be hoping it's not a similar situation to Fulham. But at first up, they brought in Wesley. He's a club record for £22 million that could rise to 25 mil. That's from Club Bruges. Tyrone Mings has signed on a permanent basis from Bournemouth after a successful loan spell. That's just over £20 million. Douglas Louise joined from Manchester City for £15 million, that's after a fair few loan deals away from the Etihad. Matt Target has joined from Southampton for an initial £14 million, and that could rise to £17 million after bonuses. Consa has joined from Brentford in the Championship for £12 million, and Marvellous Nakamba has joined from Belgian side Club Bruges, that's £11 million. Egyptian forward Trezeguet has joined from Turkish outfit Kazan Passa, that's a £9 million fee for him. They made El Ghazi's transfer permanent from Lille for just over £8 million as a clause in his contract, and Tom Heaton joined from Burnley as a backup goalkeeper, may even be number one, that's for £8 million as well. Belgian defender Engels has joined from French side Rem, and that's a £7.2 million fee, and for some reason he's not on FIFA 19, but will be returning to FIFA 20. Jota made the switch from their rivals Birmingham City for just over £4 million and they also signed House or Hoos from Wolves for £3 million. Bournemouth's first signing is going to be called Dan Juma, although on FIFA he is called, I think it's Groenveld, and he's joined from Club Bruges for £16.2 million. They also brought in Billing from Huddersfield who were relegated for £15 million, and Lloyd Kelly from Bristol City for just over £13. Million. Jack Stacey joined from Luton Town for £4 million, they also got Harry Wilson on loan from Liverpool, it's a loan fee of £2.5 million and a further 500000 in bonuses. Brighton narrowly avoided relegation last season so had to improve somewhat on their team and has so far spent just short of £60 million. First up they brought in Adam Webster from Bristol City, that's a £22 million fee which I also believe is a, a club record for them. They brought in Trussard or Trossard from KRC Genk in Belgium, £18 million for him and they also spent £18 million on Neil Mopé from Brentford. And the final player they brought in is Matt Clark from Portsmouth, that's for £3.5 million. Very close to the deadline, they brought in Aaron Moy from Huddersfield on loan for the rest of the season, and I don't believe there's an option to buy. Next up we have got Burnley, who are a team that were very, very quiet in the transfer window, and in total spent less than £10 million. And most of that fee was on Jay Rodriguez, who rejoined from West Brom. It's a £5 million buyback option, or like a clause in his contract, there's a further £5 million in additional fees. Those fees don't count for this summer. They brought in Peacock Farrell from Leeds United for £2.5 mil and Eric Peters from Stoke City for just short of a million. Burnley made a last minute deal to bring in Danny Drinkwater from Chelsea as a loan deal until January 6th. 
The Europa League winners Chelsea were up next and obviously it was a very, very odd transfer window for them uh, because they had a transfer ban. But didn't stop them signing one player at least because they bought in Mateo Kovacic on a permanent basis from Real Madrid and it's around £40 million for him. They also brought in Frank Lampard as their manager but at the same time have lost Eden Hazard to Real Madrid. I forgot to mention Pulisic coming in from Borussia Dortmund and technically this transfer was made in January because that's when they paid the transfer fee but he's still joining them this summer. And now we have got Crystal Palace and I'm recording this first part of the commentary by the way at 2pm and so far they've only spent £6.8 million total and £2.9 million of that was on James McCarthy from Everton and that transfer went through on Wednesday night. Jordan Ayew has made a permanent basis from Swansea City for 2.5 million and Victor Camarasa has joined from Real Betis and that's a loan deal for the season for 1.35 million pounds. They brought in Steven Henderson on a free from Nottingham Forest and Gary Cahill from Chelsea. Everton have made some really good signings in my opinion and first up the main one is Moise Ken from Juventus. It's believed to be a fee reaching up to £37 million after bonuses, um, but the initial base fee is closer to £27 million. He's a player with so much potential just being 19 years old as well, I'm surprised Juventus let him go on a permanent. Everton did lose a key player in Adrissa Gay who went to Paris Saint-Germain for £27 mil, but they replaced him with Jobaman from Mines. He cost them £22.5 million and they also spent the same fee on making Andre Gomez a permanent basis after a successful loan spell from Barca last season. Fabian Delph has left Champions Man City to join them for £8.5 million. It also brought in Gibral Sidibe from Monaco. It's a loan deal for 2.5 mil and a 14 million option to buy. A player they brought in on a free transfer from relegated Huddersfield Town is goalkeeper Jonas Lursel. Iwobi was brought in from Arsenal very, very late on yesterday and the fee is believed to be around 35 to 40 million. Leicester spent a decent chunk of money this summer, but most of it was on two players in particular. First up is young Belgian midfielder Euro Tielemans. He impressed a massive amount during his loan spell from Monaco in January, and Leicester like, you know what, let's make it permanent, and he cost them £40.5 million. They also brought in Ayosi Perez from Newcastle for £30 million, and James Justin from Luton Town for just over £6 million. Leicester made one more signing yesterday, bringing in Pratt from Sampdoria as bleeds to be around €20 million Euros or £18 million. Pounds. Liverpool had a great season last year, winning the Champions League for a sixth time and also having a great campaign in the Premier League. They're one point short of Manchester City and overall, their transfer winner this summer, it was the complete opposite of last year. They brought in Seth Vandenberg from PSC Zwolle, or Zwolle, I'm not sure I say a name, that's for £1.7 million pounds for him. Adrian from West Ham on a free transfer as a backup goalkeeper uh, after Mignolet left to Club Bruges, and Harvey Elliott from Fulham on a free, but there is a compensation fee to be discussed about him. Premier League champions Manchester City have arguably got one of the best squads, if not the best squad in world football right now, and they still managed to improve on it in this summer window. They broke their club record by signing Rodri from Atletico Madrid as a £63 million fee. They paid his release clause like out in full and to be fair it's a transfer that was like a long time in the making because last summer Pep Bray wanted to bring in a backup DM for Fernandinho and now Rodri is the, the successor you could say to the Brazilian international. Joa Cancelo joined from Juventus for a fee of around £58 million plus but that transfer, by the way, is quite an odd one because technically it was a swap deal and it was like Danilo plus 26 mil or 27 mil for Jar Cancelo. But for me, I'm not sure why Juventus done it because Cancelo is one of the best right backs in world football. They also brought back Angelino from PSV for just over 10 mil and Zach Stefan from Columbus Crew in the MLS. That transfer though was actually agreed I think last year and it's a £7.2 million fee for him, though he has gone straight out on loan to the Bundesliga. City didn't stop their spending by bringing in Jacques Cancelo because on deadline day they signed two players. First up is Pedro Porro uh, from Girona. He's gone back out on loan but he's cost them £10.8 million and they also brought in Scott Carson from Derby on loan for the season. Manchester United are the team probably linked to the most players throughout the whole of the summer window and they have still spent a fair amount of money. They brought in Harry Maguire for a world record fee for a defender from Leicester as an £80 million fee. They also brought in Aaron Wan-Bissaka from Crystal Palace for £55 million and their defence last season was a massive, massive issue. 
But now bringing in Wan Bissaka and Maguire should shore up a little bit. And they also brought in Daniel James from Swansea City for 15 million. Next up we have got Newcastle and they're a team that Mike Ashley in the past hasn't really been back in or financially back in too much, especially in the transfer market. That essentially led to Rafa Benitez going to the Chinese Super League to Dalian Yifang and they replaced him with Steve Bruce. But for whatever reason, he's now got a lot of money to spend and they spent over 60 million. They broke their club record by bringing in Joel Linton from Hoffenheim for 40 million pounds and Alisson Maximon from Nice for 16 mil. That one could rise to 20 mil after bonuses. The Swedish right back Emil Kraft has joined from Amiens in France for 5 million and Jetro Williams has joined from Frankfurt on a loan deal with an option to buy. Newcastle also announced the return of Andy Carroll on a free transfer after his contract at West Ham expired. Norwich do open their Premier League return tonight against Liverpool in the Premier League opener and overall from their score from last year, they spent under £4 million despite promotion. And £2.7 million of that was a loan fee to Schalke for Ralph Farman. I imagine he'll come in and replace Tim Crow as number one, but there is no option to buy. They brought in Sam Byron from West Ham for £750,000, Josip Dermic from Borussia Mönchengladbach on a free, and Patrick Roberts from Man City on loan. Young Belgian defender Bushiri has joined from KV Oostend and has an undisclosed fee for him, so technically it could be over £4 million total. And Amadou has joined from Sevilla on a loan. And the final of the three promoted teams are up next in Sheffield United, and they have spent over £42 million. But look at the players they brought in, in my opinion, I'm not convinced they'll stay up. But they did break their club record like four or five times this window and their main signing was Oliver McBurney from Swansea City. It's around 18 million pounds for him rising to over 20 mil and they also brought in Musse from Bournemouth. He cost them 10 million. Callum Robinson joined from Preston North End in the championship for 7 million pounds. Luke Freeman joined from QPR for just over 5 million pounds and Ben Osborne joined from Nottingham Forest for 3.5. Phil Jagielka rejoined the club he left a long, long time ago, I think like probably 13 or 14 years ago, it's from Everton on a free transfer. And they also signed Ravel Morrison from Oostersund, and again, a free deal. Three transfers I forgot to mention for Sheffield United are going to be first up Henderson from Manchester United. He's joined on loan for the rest of the season, and he was also there last year. Verips joined it from KV Mechelen, as a free deal and Bessic joined on deadline day from Everton on loan. A transfer that Southampton agreed over a year ago from Liverpool is Danny Ings. He's now joined on a permanent basis after his loan spell as a £20 million fee. Adams joined from Birmingham City for £15 million and Gineppo joined from Stanley Liège in Belgium for 14.1 mil. They did just avoid relegation last year but to be fair to them, January onwards when they brought the new manager in, they improved massively. Southampton confirmed the signing of Kevin Danso from FC Augsburg. It's an undisclosed fee on a five-year contract. And now we have got Tottenham, who are a team that last season didn't buy a single player in the summer window or winter window and didn't buy a player for over 500 days. They also reached a Champions League final thanks to a fantastic comeback against Ajax and their transfer window, in my opinion, has been very, very good. They brought in Tangai and Dombele from Lyon for £54 million that could rise to over £60 million with bonuses. That's a club record deal. Jack Clark joined from Leeds United for £10 million but has been loaned back for the next season. Okay, so Spurs brought in two of their three main targets for deadline day and the player they missed out on, um, unfortunately for them, was Paolo Dybala from Juventus. They did announce the deals for Ryan Sessegnon from Fulham as a £25 million fee plus Onomar going to Fulham on a free. And finally, they announced the signing of Lacelso from Real Betis, and that's a transfer that took a very, very long time. But it's an initial loan deal for £15 million. Pounds. It's also an option to buy next summer for a further 55 mil. And if they activate it, he'll become their new club record signing. Watford have been fairly quiet this window, spending just over £7.7 .7 million, pounds, and at 5.5 mil was on Craig Dawson. He joined from West Brom, and uh, they also brought in Joao Pedro from Fluminense. The fee does say £2.25 million pounds and his market value is over £18 million, but I think that was like a deal worked out a while ago. They signed Deli Bashiru from Manchester City's youth team on a free deal and Danny Welbeck from Arsenal also on a free transfer. And finally Sam Dolby from Leeds United as an undisclosed fee. Watford broke the club record by bringing in Saar from Stad Rennes and they paid £27 million. Pounds. 
And next up we have got West Ham United and I'm pretty impressed by their business because on paper their attack is looking very promising for next season. They spent over £70 million to bring players in, they also sold Marko Nautovic to Shanghai SIPG for 22 mil. But they did replace him with a very, very good striker in Sebastian Haller. The Frenchman has joined from Frankfurt in the Bundesliga as a £36 million fee. And Frankfurt made a lot of money this summer because obviously they sold Haller to West Ham, they also sold Luka Jovic to Real Madrid for 60 mil. But back onto West Ham transfers, they brought in Pablo Fornal from Villarreal as a £25 million fee for him. Ajeti is a Swiss forward signed from FC Basel for £8 million. Goncalo Cardozo joined from Boa Vista for 2.7 mil. And two free transfers for goalkeepers. First up is David Martin from Millwall and Roberto from Espanyol. And the final team to cover in the Premier League is going to be Wolverhampton Wanderers. And Wolves last season impressed a lot of people after being promoted from the championship and they also secured themselves Europa League football. They made Raul Jimenez's move from Benfica a permanent deal for £34 million and it makes sense why he'd done that because he was brilliant last season and uh, already has a market value of £31.5 mil. They brought in Pedro Neto from Lazio for £16.4 million. That's a double deal because they also signed a second player and that is going to be Bruno Jordao. He cost them £8.2 million. Promising Italian forward Patrick Cotrone joined from AC Milan for £16 million that could rise to £20 mil after bonuses. Versatile Belgian player Leander Dendonka made his move from Adelaide to permanent basis after a loan spell and he cost them around £12 million. Then we have got Flavio Cristoval. Sorry I say his name wrong, but he has joined from Desportivo Aves on a free transfer. Jesus Vallejo has joined from Real Madrid on a loan deal for the season, and Dadashov joined from Estoril for an undisclosed fee. But that, guys, is going to be it for this video. So if you could do that good stuff by leaving a like rating, press the subscribe button if you're new, and press the bell notification next to it so you never miss an upload. Yes, this episode will be down below in the description box and current schedule every day at 8am UK time is a new transfer episode. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time.